All right, Barbara's working on painting all the woodwork. It's a little depressing now that this is all open back up again. Oh man, I gotta get that piece off the front. I'll do that next. But uh, thought I'd put some time into the water system. I bought a, another water pump. It's just like the one I have up in there for my recirculating shower. So that's kind of neat. If one of my pumps burns out, I've got a spare. And uh, I bought this water filter, I guess you'd call it a filter system. It's a for 100 and 139 free shipping. Got two filters. One of these is one micron. I think that's this one. The other one is a half a micron, and I believe this one's got carbon in it too. This is pretty heavy. So, I mean, that's that's what I was looking for. Let me put these in here. Um, I, 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 the next size up of filtration system, or next step up in filtration system, was way more expensive. And I didn't want to go that far, so this is going to... This is just going to have to do it. So what I like about this system is I've had one filter of this size with just a sand filter in my house for years and it worked fine and it was baked in the sun and it never gave me a lick of trouble. I periodically would unscrew it and get the sand and wash the filter out. So that design filter was something that I was comfortable with using. This uh, size of filter, I don't think I'll have a chance to completely contaminate these filters in my lifetime using this bus. Maybe I will, I don't know. Just for the volume of water that I'm probably gonna be using. But one thing that stuck out that I wanna share with y'all is everywhere else I saw these filter canisters available, because all you gotta do, right, is just buy these filter canisters anywhere you can amazon or whatever buy or make yourself a bracket and put the cartridges in it it's not really all that complicated but these uh filter housings do not have the button on the top to vent out air the, your little bleeder valves you push the button i forget which side it is on this which I find very important to have in my bus, to not have it, that is, because I don't want to run the risk of having a leak, you know, um, back here in my storage area. Something hits this button or falls on that button, this pump's going to just empty the whole tank until that is discovered, a, a leak. So, And I, I don't believe I have the need to uh, purge air out of these filters. Um, it'll just purge itself at, out the outlet right there. So what's kind of neat about this is uh, this bracket's probably steel, which, you know, I would like aluminum better, but uh, it's got stainless steel screws on top. Uh, it's already pre-assembled. Um, if your configuration, you want the inlet on the opposite side, all you got to do is take out all these screws and flip the whole thing around the other way and your inlet's on the other side. I think, for me, I want the inlet right where it is when I was doing some brainstorming on this. So I really I really couldn't get this to gel in my head what I wanted uh, until I get this in my hand and kind of just start mocking up what I'd like to have. And I'm going to show you what I think I want to do. I think all right, this tank goes right there. I think I want this right about there. I could actually go up here with it. Give me some more room below. That's a thought. And I probably would put something against the wall just so that this thing won't teeter and work that bracket but if i put this there 
Then I've got this space below, and that's where I'm gonna have my outlet coming out of the tank and coming across. My pump's gonna be in this area here. And I've gotta have a series of valves built into this thing. Oh yeah, I need to make sure that this vent can make it across here to the top of the tank. So that'll work out just right, man, if I put it there. So uh, on the outside of the bus, in the same area, almost exactly where this is, just by coincidence, is where the rub rail is on the outside. So uh, my water inlet is gonna come in below this. So that'll come in here. So the first thing, I believe, anyway, this is what I want. The first thing from my water inlet is gonna go through the inlet, go through the coarse filter, then the fine filter, and then it'll go through here and either feed my suction side, um, well, the, all the valving, the output of this will either go to, um, the house plumbing or it'll go to fill the tank depending on which way you flip all the valves and it'll fill the tank through the same line that drains the tank which sounds a little weird but it doesn't water doesn't care which way it flows in that circuit <coughs> excuse me so uh, let me get my pump out here and start kind of modeling how I want this thing to be configured so they sent me the wrong kit. They sent me the pump with this suction filter, which I'm going to have a suction filter. But this particular type, it screws on, and which wherever this thing stops, that's where it stops when you tighten it. I found a place, an RV supply store, that sells these same filters but instead of this thing being solid, it's got a swivel nut like this built into it. So you can position it however you like and just spin the nut off and it's, I think, the way to go. <clears throat> Let me get this thing out of here. All right, I'm gonna show you now a better, better look at the difference between these filters. This is the one that RecPro sells individually and with their kits. Strainer, 50 mesh, vacuum side only, hand tighten only. Okay. No, it's got to flow that way. So this you could screw onto your pump, on the suction side of your pump. Let me show you what I mean by how I don't really care for it. Okay, so I just screwed this on directly to the suction side of the pump. And I got it, you know as tight as I think it ought to be. And you notice its position? I would prefer to have the bowl hanging down so mm -hmm. I'll be able to see the crud in it, et cetera, et cetera, right? Now if we take this off of here, I could put this one on, which is the same darn thing, except it comes with this swivel nut fitting. I can position this thing however I want it to go and tighten this nut down. All right, one-handed here, it's the best I can do, right? See the difference? And if I wanna service this thing, I can easily just unscrew this without having to unscrew the whole thing around and, you know, I don't know if I'm being anal attentive here, but I just find that to be a much more desirable way of using a strainer on this. I'm not that big of a fan of putting this on the suction side of the pump directly because of the, you know, it's vulnerable for getting hit, but I haven't yet figured out what I want to do with that. That's the difference on those. This is the uh, fitting I, I found that I liked the most of all the places I could find. It's all solid brass. It's got a built-in check valve, and this looks to be half-inch pipe. Um, it's got the little boot on here. Like I said, solid brass. You can see the, the little poppet inside. Uh, so I've got to figure out where I'm going to put this thing. 
It's going to be on the outside of the bus, obviously, but it's going to be about down here, I think, uh, in order to clear that rub rail. The rub rail is about two inches lower than this. I just double checked. So it's probably going to be about that high. And this is about as thick as the walls of my bus. Uh, then we got three quarter inch plywood beyond that. So I'm going to have to screw an adapter fitting onto this to some kind of hose that I can attach to this with some kind of fitting. And that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out how I want to do right now. Garden hose, garden type hose would probably be the easiest thing. Uh, just want to be kind of sensitive to the hole. I want this to be as strong as I can and not have to worry about some really high pressure coming from an RV campground or someplace. I heard out west that you can get 100 PSI. I probably should get a pressure regulator. Uh, anyway. I gotta figure this all out now. All right, I, I got these. I think it was uh, spinwelding.com. It's Custom Plastics is the name of the company. Um, I chose uh, these uh, one inch female pipe thread that are the flush type. Um, there's the protruding type. This is my experimental tank, by the way. This is the protruding type where the, the fitting is on the threaded part is external. The ones that I bought are, are flush to this. And the reason I went with that is I think the ones I bought might be a little stronger because when you screw this in, this is gonna to try to stretch because these are tapered pipe thread. And given enough stress, it could split. So, you know, I'm just uh, probably overthinking the heck out of this thing. A friend of mine gave me this tank out of an old camper trailer. But uh, unfortunately for me, it's, I couldn't fit it. Um, it's too long for one of my tanks and too wide for the other so anyway when this is installed it's going to be all the way flush down there so what i figured was after this is installed the tank itself and the hole that it sits in is going to help hold this diameter tight so um the way you do this and i've not done this yet i've only looked at uh some videos and I've stayed at a Holiday Inn Express. So um, we're gonna learn how to do this on this tank before I mess up on my own, which I think I can handle this, it's pretty simple. So I need to measure this outside diameter of this fitting. So we're, let's see what size we are by inch and a quarter, 1.466. Jesus, they could have given me a nice, nicer size of 1.466. Oh, over here it's inch and a half. Oh, so it's bigger than an inch and a half down there. All right, so let me drill an inch and a half hole in that tank. And then we put this in a router and the friction from spinning creates enough heat that it melts the plastic together like welding. So let's see how it goes. All right, um, I'm just using this 40 year old hole saw. These things are great by the way. I don't know if you can still even buy those. It's inch and a half and it fits perfectly here, but when we get down in there, it's kind of tight. Uh, I'm gonna just try it like that and see how it goes. And I guess I should, 
probably clean that surface. Let's get a razor blade here. Just scrape this clean of the oxidized. This is a very old, old tank. And I mean, it wasn't out in the sun, but at least there's an effort, right? So let's get the router out. Okay, so uh, <laughs> it's always something, right? Uh, this router is the one that I intended to use. Uh, this guy's probably 50 years old. It's fine. I, you just can't believe what a great router this is. Uh, it's got this handy dandy trigger, uh, which makes this very easy to use. Right now it's on this base, which was a jig. This is like 3 8 aluminum here. This is a thing I had rigged up on these four holes to my milling machine and I was doing some really weird stuff. But, uh, I'm gonna take this plate off with these three screws. And what I'm gonna try, oh, so this router has only a quarter inch collet. The bit that I have is for half inch. My new router has a half inch collet and I'm pretty sure my new router which is also Porter Cable. Um, I think it, it'll fit in here. And the reason why I'm going through all this is the power switch on this router is kind of awkward to turn on and off. And I'm gonna need to turn this thing on and off with some uh, precision right to some degree because I have to shut it off right away as soon as the weld occurs to the right extent or I'll just melt right through and I can't be fumbling around with that switch so I'm going to try to use this guy and see if I'll have some luck with that so let's first try to make sure I'm, I think I tried this once before right after I bought that guy and I was kind of cognitive of the whole base thing when I bought that new router. Looks the same, right? Let's see. This will fit in there. Yeah, it fits right in there just like it's made for it. Okay. So let me uh let me get that off the base. All right, so here's our test run. So, uh, I don't know if that's on or off. Okay, it's on. So, all right, I'm already seeing. So, this router has this soft start feature that when you turn it on, let me do this. Okay. R right now, I, I've got the router plugged into the switch base, right? And this has its own switch. This has its own wire. And I've got this thing plugged into power source. So now I've got it clicked to on and stay on. Now, if you watch, this thing comes on real slow and easy. also variable speed. Let me turn it down. I think we'll go with that. I would have liked it to work like the old router and router and just come on. I think that's a little slow. Well, let's just try it at that speed. I don't even know if this is going to work because that hole is a little tight on this thing. So uh, I'm not going to be able to show you how this goes. I'll just have to explain it when I'm done. So uh, I'm just going to put this down in the hole, pull the trigger, and see if I can weld it in there. Well, 
think I got it. It's smoking a little bit still. Uh, so I did this at like two little test spins here. The first one, it was going a little bit too slow. Um, so I jacked it up to almost the number two setting. I could probably go a little higher than that. Um, and I, I just kept going until plastic started, little pieces of molten plastic started slinging out and hit me in the legs here. And uh, it's in there. So now as a test, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let this cool off. It's still hot enough that I almost can't leave my hand on it. It's pretty hot. I'm gonna let that cool off completely. I'm gonna put a pipe in there and bend it back and forth and see just how strong that is. Okay, uh, I made a mistake earlier. Those are inch and a quarter, I believe. Or, no, wait a minute, it is one inch. One inch PVC, I, I don't know. Ever since I got glasses, I can't ever tell my sizes apart. So, that's normalized pretty good. It's just warm. I'm noticing it's hot on the inside of the thread. So I think this is going to be an absolutely superior uh, weld because I suspect it's welded not just the surface, but around the circumference of the hole. So let's see what we got going on here. That is fabulous. All right, so let me tell you what the, the plan is here. Hold on. So, all right, this is, what size is this? One inch flexible PVC pipe. It's like a hose, but it's of PVC material and you can use PVC glue and glue it into PVC fittings. It's kind of cool, it's kind of expensive, but we got this stuff, right? So, I'm pretty sure, yeah, if you, hold on. All right, so, remember that vent right there? I'm actually coming in here just to double check. All right, that's one inch PVC. So this is my vent, it goes down. All right, so there's uh, a size of that flexible PVC pipe that'll fit over this, okay? And I can use a hose clamp on it to clamp it to this. And that's why I bought this nipple. I'm gonna cut this nipple off and use it like a hose bar, if you will. All right, so I'm sticking with the one inch pipe fitting and on my tank, I've got this guy that on the top of my tank, I'm gonna screw this into the top of the tank. And now I'm gonna, sorry. I'm gonna glue in a piece of one inch PVC pipe. And then I'll take that flexible PVC that fits over it with a clamp. So the reason why I'm going through that kind of rigmarole and unorthodox way of connecting things together is I want this to be disconnectable and connectable by, you know, just sliding on a hose with a clamp. I don't want to deal with unions and all that stuff. So my vent is all one inch threaded and, and I wanted to have one inch diameter on the vent so that the vent would be a larger pipe than the fill so I won't uh, over pressurize my tank when I'm filling it it'll vent out more readily than it'll fill um, so that's the reason for the one inch so now I'm also going to use one inch on the um, drain line of the tank or the draw line if you will to draw the water out of the tank and I'm going to use this this is a one inch to half inch so my connection to my system is gonna be with half inch pipe. This is gonna be my adapter.
to screw into the tank to reduce it down to half inch pipe thread. And that's not high tech, that's no big deal, right? But if you notice, sorry about that. If you notice, we're off the bottom of the tank by about a half of an inch. Plus, we're gonna start drawing air if we're sucking, and say this is tearing at its side, okay? And this is the bottom over here. So once we put this in here, now we're probably, we'll start sucking air um, at about, what did that, about inch and a half off the bottom. So an inch and a half times the whole area of that tank, that's a lot of water. So my plan is, if I can pull it off, on the back side of this guy, I'm gonna thread this or glue, maybe I'll glue a nipple, a hose barb, and I'm gonna put a hose on the end of this guy. And that hose is gonna have a, a little stainless steel weight at the end of it. So that the hose will lay on the bottom of the tank and it can bend around with the slosh with the fluids and it's not gonna matter. But that's gonna give me a little bit extra pickup off the bottom of the tank. And at the same time, this connection is gonna be at the rear of the tank, if you will, the rear of the vehicle. And this thing tends to lean forward a little bit. So there'll be more water at the front of the tank. So that's another aspect of this. This hose is gonna go clear to the front of the tank with that weight up in there. So that's the plan. But I am tickled to death at how well this welded in there. It is absolutely perfect and it's flawless. It's the first time I've ever tried it. It was a piece of cake. All I had to do was hold the router straight and wait for it to get hot. And once I felt like it melted enough of the plastic, I just stopped and held the router there for about 30 seconds. And I lifted it right off these little pins, which I can cut these off now that I don't, now that it's already welded in there. I'm loving it. That was really a piece of cake.